keep it G real. I don't fuck with you because you disrespecting me. You disrespect my hood by telling me take off my flag, asking how gangster I was, nigga. You lucky on that day I was acting cool, cuz. I told you I ain't got time for that, but nigga, today I got time, cuz. Hey! Hello! Hey! 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 This is champion music right here. This is what separates the boys from the men. Music like this. It doesn't get old to you, man. Hey, champion music. This is Kitchen Talk, man. You already know what it is. Episode 38. You keep holding that up there right there like we just can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Very important information. Shout out to right. my man. Shout out to my homie Squeaks, man. Big shout out to the to the gang, man. Shout out to uh, Optimus Prime, his brother yes. Petey. You know, shout out to Coach Golf. He's a, a a sixth grade gym coach on the, uh, on the weekdays. Making it happen. Shout out to the Kitchen Talk ladies and Pearls Monroe and... And everybody over there doing their thing, cooking. Because we, we, we don't just do a podcast. We set a vibe. Yes. We, we provide a vibe. It's a whole mood. Like, like, we provide a whole mood. You know what I mean? You know, it's a little drinks, a little hookah, whatever you like. Whatever you like. Whatever you into. Whatever you into. Like, whatever you like. Yeah. Made whatever him, you like. might curse you out. It's all part of it. It happens. You know what I'm saying? It happens. It happens. It happens. Whatever works. <laughs> shout out. Shout out to the gang, man. Shout out to y'all. Um, I want to send a big shout out to my brother Ricky. Ricky Hustle Hard. Yes. Like I said it, like I've been saying every week, he will be back. Um, we miss you, Rick. Come on. We, you know, I never put up a a, a free Ricky uh, post because I we not gonna do that. Oh. Ricky will be free, so we ain't even gonna promote that. Oh, free my nigga and all that. Like he will it's just be. Just the moment. So, um, uh, man, today's today today's a special 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 day. We got um. Uh, we having somebody special, somebody dear to me, right? We having a, like a legend in the building. We don't always get legends here. We get a couple niggas that's, you know, but this is a legend, right? Um, she was a very, very, very big deal in New York City, New York City radio. And when I was coming up. <coughs> in Philly. In Philly. <laughs> New York City and Philly radio. And when I was coming up, when I was on my grime, and I was on the mixtapes and the DVDs, um, she had the, the number one uh, show in, in the tri-state area. Um, and she she would let me come up. I, I came up maybe two or three times, and it was a very big deal for me. And everybody understanding radio and understanding radio before the Internet, before social media, you understand that morning radio is the anchor of all radio. That's the big show. So if you get on that, like, you... That's prime time. That's when people are going to school, going to work. So I had got those looks very early on, and um, and I was always grateful for that. And I, I just want to uh, salute and 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 give you your flowers while while you while you still here, and and tell you that I never forgot that and I appreciate that. Round of applause for the legendary Miss Jones. That was so sad. It's the real. It's the real though. That's that was real. an intro. That was nice. But, but yeah, you know, but you know how I felt being able to come up there. I felt really good. Like, like you know, rappers dreamt about, especially coming from New York City, to, you know, tri-state area, being on Hot ninety seven, being it made you feel like you was in the big leagues. And me coming from a criminal background and all the stuff I had to deal with, and to to be Made able to it be all the more better. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it like come on, like it was it was, it was I never forgot that. So thank you. Thank you. And I wanted to embrace you then because going on the mix shows is one thing. Right. That's the, that's that's one thing. Yeah. That's one thing. And then going to afternoons or you know going prime to time. That's a, that's a great thing too. That's right. also mm -hmm. prime time. But morning show is reserved for a listers. That's right. Morning show is is the big leagues. That's usually where you got to got your. Like you said, those A-list artists, and at that time I was just a mixtape rapper, you know. And um, but you had A-list personality, and you, you had that star. Thank you. Yeah, I knew. Thank you. I, I knew we'd be here. <laughs> look, look at all, look at all this hate in the room. Ain't nobody even hating hating on me. <laughs> no, it's, you want somebody to hate on you so? Not a you one. You heard what she said. I had that <laughs> personality. I had that pizzazz. He had yeah, that star pizz quality. Yeah, I knew. And then when you came the first time after I met you. I wanted you to keep coming back. Yeah. You were a different personality. You weren't the, oh, I'm promoting a movie. Mm. Uh -oh, he would right. just come and shoot the shit. Yeah. He always had amazing stories. And I always was like, 
Then what happened? <laughs> <laughs> One thing about him, he's a great storyteller. And there's always story something there's happening. Always, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm like, but there's, there's a real story. Yeah. He's like making things up. And you be sitting there like, what? He be like, and then I took the gun out his mouth. <laughs> oh, see, yeah, that was a real, real thing. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> let me tell you. Don't incriminate no, yourself. Right? No, the statue is over. It's the statue is over. over. You can talk about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, plus, you can talk about it, right? <laughs> right. I'm like, not too upset. What upset happened was road. this. <laughs> Um, there was a guy that worked at Hot 97. I, I think his name was Chris Nadler. Yeah. He passed away, right? He did. May he rest his soul. He texted me. It was Blackberries back then. I remember Blackberries. Um, he said, um, we want it, we want we want you to perform at the, the on the festival stage for Hot 97 Summer Jam. I felt like a like something going through me. Like, what? This Summer Jam. This is my first Dude. time at Summer Jam. And what happened was Summer Jam is on a Sunday. Saturday, I went shopping, and I was in a store in East New York, Brooklyn. And I was in the store. And at this time, people were knowing me from the, from the DVDs and the mixtapes. So I was kind of getting known. And next thing you know, I was in the store. I was in there running my mouth all day. People was coming in there, in and out. Next thing you know, I had a gun in my, gun in my head. I had a gun in my head. And... There was these kids attempting to rob me, and I was just like, "Wow, you know, I'm I'm the hood. Like, you gonna you gonna do this to me?" And um, what happened was, without even getting too much in it, into it, I reversed the situation. I reversed the situation. He wound up shot. I wound up with the gun, <laughs> and you know, it 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 made some news, and I end up talking about a little bit about it on on Miss Jones show. In the morning, so that was that was a moment in my life. That was like you know a huge I mean? moment, right? It was a huge moment because then I wound up performing right the next day at at, at the uh, on on the festival stage. So that was a uh, that was like a we couldn't big have thing. gotten a better publicity. Yeah, right. Right. yeah, it was like, right. right. Said, this, he can't be that real. <laughs> right. He took the gun. It was like a movie. Shot him with his own gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it happened. And at that point, you always had a seat at our table on mm. the morning show. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. But how you how you been though? I've been well. I've been well. When I left in 2008, Hot 97, I was or, I had already been syndicated in Philly for the year before. Right. And they asked me to stay an extra year so they could get big boy, the people that were replacing me. Right. Get them, you know, caught up. So I was like, I'll stay another year. And Philly was good with it because they were still getting the show. Mm -hmm. So when I left, I went there, but I was pregnant. Okay. So after I... um. Got down there, things didn't work out, and it was. I so probably you went, you Philly. left New York and went to Philly. Mm -hmm. But remember, I was already you on was Philly. already syndicated in Philly, right. but now you you, you went now there. I'm physically there. Physically I'm not going there. 95 North now. I'm going 95 South. Right. But they knew you there already. Like, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Right. You was already a big deal. Yeah. Um, why did you leave out 97? Just because my contract was up, I, and I had done an extra year, and when I had my first son, I didn't take a break. I worked straight through, and this time. I kind of wanted to experience motherhood without a microphone. Understandable. Mm. So you, you didn't leave because of no drama, none of that? No, no, no. And people think I was fired. So Ebro actually came on my, so I have a podcast called the Miss Jones Morning Show Reunion. Okay. It's on YouTube. Right, that's right. And, and I was on it today. Yes, he was on it today. <laughs> yeah, shout out to the whole staff. Shout out to the whole crew. Yeah, Mado was shocked when he Where? came on. He's like, Wait, you brought everybody back yeah. on the show. <laughs> we that. were just talking about it on the phone yesterday, yeah. yeah. It That's was, love, though. Was, I love that. Yeah, it was lovely. But so when Ebro heard about it the first episode, he called me and was like, how y'all having a reunion and y'all ain't call me? <laughs> I was like, nigga, we call. But of course, you never answer because you think people want Summer Jam tickets. So. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he came and I said, can you please tell the world, was I fired from Hot 97? He was like, no, you were never fired. But see, once one person says it, and no right. one's there to shut it down. Right, right. Because that's the thing. It's like, right. if you Google it, that's the story. Like, they just be like, yo, Miss really? Jones got fired. Yeah, right. pretty much. And that was not the case. Yeah. But then I'm not on a microphone to clear it up. Right, right, right. So here I am now on my podcast to clear all that shit. Absolutely. Right. I love that little microphone necklace. You have yeah. On. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. That's, that's yeah. crazy. I, I, I didn't know that. Let's, let's go back a little bit, though. Because a lot of people don't know that before... You got on radio. You were actually 
a signed recording artist, an R&B artist. Correct. Talk about it. Hot, hot, like you. Hey. you, 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 you that's right. Yeah. Okay. That, that was A Z record. Okay. Uh, 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 Sugar Hill. Yep. Sure, yep. What was it? Sugar Free. I wanna shake. Yeah. Ow. Let's hey. get it. Let's get it. Sugar Hill. Hey. So long. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Uh huh. <laughs> that wound up being the biggest record in my career. Wow. And I didn't even want to do it at first. That's so crazy. you was you was a you, you grew up in Astoria. Yep, you from the Me same. Too. M. For real, the <laughs> same. Yes. Hey, boo. Yes, girl. <laughs> really? Yes. I didn't know that. Well, I don't know anything <laughs> about you. I know. I'm like you don't know are, anything. About are you me. from the same projects that Noriega is from? Um, no, Nori is from Left Rack. Left Rack. Nas and I'm is down the block right. in the bridge. The bridge is right. I'm in Astoria, and then there's Ravenswood. And then right, 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 right. And, and so you grew up wanting to be an artist. Yes. I always wanted to be a singer since I was like five or six years old. So how did you get on? So I spent, even at that young age, I spent a lot of time on punishment. <laughs> a lot. And so all I had in my room was a little radio. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the only music that was really being played was pop music. It wasn't a black station. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up. Right. So I used to listen to, I, I learned this song called, it's by this woman named Crystal Gale. She's a, a country singer. Don't it make my brown eyes blue. <laughs> <laughs> it is the whitest song ever known to mankind. <laughs> and I sung it in my first grade talent show. Wow. And the white people loved me. Wow. <laughs> and wow. that's all I needed was that confirmation mm -hmm. and that, Plug in my back. Right. And I just kept going, kept going, kept going, kept Did going. Did you write your own song? Eventually. Okay. Eventually. My first album, it didn't get released, actually. Mm -hmm. My first album was on Stepson slash Tommy Boy. Okay. Stepson. Yeah. That folded years ago. It did. Years later, right? It did. I left before it folded, but Stepson, that remember. whole album budget was only $50,000. Wow. For wow. R&B album. So wow. you're competing. At that time, I'm competing against Mary J. Blige. I'm competing against... The, the Jades, the, mm -hmm. all these in Vogue, wow. who have these million dollar budgets. Mm -hmm. and, and I had 50000 but it was okay because of me and my story of thinking is I'm going to get my foot in the door. And once people see and hear me, the money will come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we put the first single out, Don't Front. It was fairly okay. But back then they had, they had a video show called The Box. I remember Box. The Box. Yes. Where you could jack the box. So you get on the jack. And you order whatever video you want. Mm -hmm. I'd be ordering my shit all night. <laughs> <laughs> all night. But the labels are watching it in the record label offices. And they're like, they love her. Who is this girl? Right. Mm -hmm. the game. And so then we put out the second single. Mm -hmm. And now all the rappers want to come and be a part of the girl who everybody's ordering her video all day. Mm -hmm. And then... I was kind of cute back then. And the song was cute. So cute. Still, still cute. cute. Still cute. You know. Definitely still Thank cute, you. girl. <laughs> relax, cute, baby. Relax, relax, no, relax, no. relax. <laughs> no, no, because I'm, I'm mad y'all said it before me. <laughs> That's your problem. Always personal. Always. It's always personal for him. So right. Why are you looking at me? But so, you missed it. It's okay. So then the next single came, and Tommy Boy stepped in and said, you guys are fucking up. We're taking over. We're going to take, this is a crossover song. Mm -hmm. It needs to be pushed properly. So they pushed Stepson out the way. Oh, and they came in. And overnight, I had new radio people. I had nice. new publicity people. I'm doing BET, not uh, the, the weekend shows. I'm right. doing Donnie Simpson right, and Sherry right, okay, yeah. Real stuff. Right, right, and right. Um, once you start getting those looks, you know, you appear bigger than maybe your bank account is. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. it's always like that. Right. <laughs> I'm still doing my shows on the weekend and making right. my money, and I never turn down any amount. I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't take crazy low money, but right. I wasn't like, oh, I need 4000 and airplane tickets for everybody. And right. Just me, mm -hmm. my little dancers. It was, get, it was getting to it. Right. And how did you get on the AZ song? Because that's such a classic song. Shut the hell song. So, AZ's record person, Lindsay, whose grandmother is Sylvia from Sylvia Soul Food. Yes. Yeah. Sylvia Soul Food? Yep. That's a Sylvia. Ha in Harlem. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right, right. Her grandson, Lindsay, was the A&R for, I think it was EMI Records. And Bill Stephanie and Lindsay were friends. Right. 
So Bill had my project that he's trying to, and AZ was new. Yeah, he had had Buzz with Nas, but it wasn't. It, it wasn't. It was a crossover, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was street. Right. So the two of them got together and tried to get the two of us together. But I was like, I don't know him. And at mm-hmm. that point, I'm like, I'm on my own borrowed time. Right, right, you know? right. So then Nas called. LES was my DJ at the time. LES. Yeah. And he was like, look. He gonna be hot. Nas is riding with him. Do the song, mm-hmm. right? And I did the song, and it wound up being a huge. So I'm glad I did. And he's a great guy, and he's so talented, and he gets so much respect from everybody. Mm-hmm. Az, I, um, I love Az. Yeah, that was a that was a good call. That was a good call. And while I'm doing all of those things, so now the videos are playing. I'm getting more of a you know a profile Buzz and a look. Right. Mm-hmm. The uh, PD at Hot 97 asked me come do radio and i'm like child please what, i'm gonna be a big what star made, what made her no it was steve smith remember steve no i don't remember steve he was, was the he was the one the blonde curly guy i remember Patrick. tracy right she was under steve oh i didn't uh, yeah i wasn't steve around. flipped hot from a pop station to a hip-hop right, station i remember hot 97 was like a like a dance station right like, with paco like, and, and, and right and flex was on it back then yep wow and it was like a like mm-hmm. a dance. They was playing like CC Peniston and all that. Like yep. they were playing dance music. And Angie was on the street team. Wow. Mm-hmm. What what made her look at you or made him look at you and say, You need to do radio? Preparation. Because I knew the morning before I was or the weekend before I, I got Ed Lover and Dr. Dre were the launched morning show. Mm-hmm. They had billboards and I remember before that. then no black Radio people had ever had that type of publicity. So if yeah. you got invited to be on their morning show, that was a huge I'm deal. going. <laughs> I am a person that respects anybody that's taking time. So I research you. Mm-hmm. So I went there with a promo for them. I knew they did something called the roll call. So I had yeah. one of my rapper yeah. friends write me a roll call. So when it was time to do the roll call, and they're like, Miss Jones, you want to do a roll call? And I'm like, I'll try. <laughs> but meanwhile, you're ready. What? I had for like a whole week. I my, what? And I sung it, so it was different. So mm-hmm. I just prepared. I tell everybody that if you prepare, you will never be caught off guard. Absolutely. And then the bonus, I looked so, I guess, seamless with my, because mm-hmm. I practiced what I would say. When you stay ready, you ain't got to get what ready. What I didn't want to say. Mm-hmm. That's right. And then at the end, he was like, and I, and I brought them hot cross buns, homemade. Okay. Nice. Wow. Okay. And I didn't take the car service because the car service would have gotten me there late because it was more. I knew I knew traffic, so I got my ass on the E train. So you mm-hmm. did you did all this knowing that you wanted to be on radio at this point? No, I just wanted my record be your to best, go, and I wanted to impress President. New York. Yes, right. So this at this point is only about your music. That's it. Who ha- I never I didn't want to do radio. I wanted to sing. Look, I still want to sing. <laughs> right. But oh. radio wound up, you know. He's a, he's a record producer also, slash gym teacher. I'd be like, what's up with a main on Miss Jones song? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey. Hey. That would be okay. Hey. 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 downstairs. We could, yeah. That yeah. would be fire. Yeah. Hello. It would be. Hello. Yes, it would be. It would be. It would, it, it, no, sh- yeah. it would be. It should be. Yeah, Y'all are not even arguing be. about nothing. No, like, Y'all literally not even arguing about nothing. I know what it is. She's giving me. No, what it is. It's just like. It's the Star Trek vibe you're giving me. You know what you could do, right? It's the, it's the Stop s- that. Superhero Stop it. thing. <laughs> I love her. Mm-hmm. But it's just like she wants to, like, you know. Dominate you? Yeah. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with being dominated? Allow yourself to be dominated for a second. Why? Because that's what it's about. Right. We have to get used to it. Thank you. And it's not so okay. bad. So you know what? <laughs> we can rub my shoulder. See? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Jones. I'm going to be Mr. C. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so Mano. Yeah. I'm going to sit over here like this. <laughs> Get your hand off my shoulder. He said, whoa now. No, yeah. you were very, no, you were so super cool. Mr. C is my guy, man. That, yeah. that, that, He's that all my guy. Yeah, like that, him, t- him like, he wasn't rubbing my shoulder either. He just. You yeah, can tell right that's there. just how he talked. He was just like, talking. You can tell. Like, yeah, like some people talk with their hands. He was very passionate. Yeah. But I said to Mano when we did my show, I said, now you realize if you had done that to me, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Everything's a problem nowadays. Mm-hmm. With Everything. The touching, right. Everything's right. a problem. 
So, but that wasn't one, and that's we, good. We, so, we in a sense, but I think it's also like where he was at with it too. Like he was just like you know. Yeah, and I think that's that's where he was at at that time. You know, he I mean? felt a lot, comfortable. Yeah, a lot of family. Yeah, you right. you were kind of with him back back in the day though. You know what I'm saying? Did you ever notice anything like that? Like you just like stuff that was just like, oh, I'm not I sure what this is about. I never did. I never did because, mm-hmm. yeah, you like he always wore black t-shirts. Not that that's like the sign of not. <laughs> I'm like regular. okay, he, was okay. A regular. No, he wasn't even regular. This is always hard. Okay, like, always hard. Like what's up, Jones? Like just, I guess I have a stigma of yeah. what that looks like, and right. he wasn't. He didn't fit it in my eyes. I like, mean, people, right. a lot of people have stigmas, and it's usually not what they think it is. You know what it is? People people look at this show every week and think she she's yeah. uh, part of the LGBT. I'm dead. Right? LGBTQ. Okay, people think that she's gay. Yeah, she's not. In case you got those same vibes, she's not. <laughs> you got those same vibes. She's not. I didn't get them. No, but people, they, look, listen, I get calls. Like, and, and they, they, you know, they like, yeah, you sitting over there with a, with a person that's supposed to be in, in the community, and she's not even saying nothing, and I'm like, she's not in the you community. You didn't get that call. I you, got, you listened well, it was to a something. I mean, or something. It was something. Don't try to. Don't try to. Don't try to. <laughs> type of comments but it though. do yeah. be perspective though like you know like it, it's always perspective like people will look at you and think a certain thing people will look at you and think yeah they think thing. that you're so tough but you're really softer than drugstore kind. Hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on we go, we will address <laughs> this <laughs> let me exactly how was Mano back in the day like i want to know who Mano back in the day was you know Ms. jones would know you know <laughs> you yeah, know i don't want that i don't you know yeah we don't you know Entity, I yeah. caught it no because I caught it. I caught a, a, a lawsuit over you. Oh, you shit. caught a lawsuit over me. Yeah, I don't know you, about that. A lawsuit you ended up on TMZ over there in Mansion. You were sitting over there <laughs> that, that that day when the kid tried to step all over y'all and I lost my mind. You, you was dead. I got sued for that. That wasn't me. Yeah, it don't matter. You was there. I got sued for that. <laughs> Stop playing with me. Yeah, it's still yeah. there. <laughs> right? It's still no, there. it's not. It is. So I've back changed. to Young Mano, though. Like, how was that? Like, I was like, how was, how was Young Mano back I, in the I day? I always smiled. <laughs> it worked for you, I guess. It's not my interview. Like, well, <laughs> like, you got this right, right, you gotta listen to my podcast for his. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah. Check it out. Episode nine, Miss Jones Morning Check Show it out. Reunion on That's YouTube. right. That's that's dope though. Nine episodes. Yeah. DJ and Envy. Honestly, yes, DJ Envy. It's my former comedian, Mike Sean. Mm-hmm. I have my two producers because, you know, I just. I, I you work with who you like to work with. Right. right. And they get me. Yes. And, and that's Shani, important. Right. Shawnee Culture, who still works for Ebro. Mm-hmm. That's right. And Ebro was with us until he caught COVID. Mm-hmm. And then I was just like, I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Like, just get better. Yeah. So, yeah. so let me ask you. you. You promoting your song. Thank you. <laughs> you're doing, Thank you're, you. You're no doing, problem. You're doing your I thing. Want the whole thing to slide down. <laughs> you're doing your thing. You on a song with AZ. People know you. When did the pivot and how did the pivot happen for you to get on radio? Oh, right. So Steve Smith said, he called me to the side and was like, I have an idea. I'm trying something new. And I'd like to make you be like the first R&B singing uh, female R&B singing uh, radio personality. And I was like, child, please, I'm going to be a star. I don't have time to do radio. So and he was like, just humor me. And I said, I don't know how to do it. He goes, I'll train you. you. I said, I have shows in a week. And he goes, you can pick the day you want. So I'm wow. like, well, right, okay, maybe this is. So I said, okay. And then I chose Sunday because I come back from shows Saturday night. Right. And then I rocked out and I just. I did that for like five years without ever even thinking of making it a full time because I was still trying to get the record stuff together. So you was on the radio. What? What? what so you started at what? what? I was on Motown by this time. All right. Mm-hmm. So which, uh, at what point? All right. So you at Motown. You doing your shows and you doing radio. What slot? Were you Sunday doing? morning, seven to ten. Sunday morning. What? What show was that called? Just who the fuck is up except for me? Like <laughs> <you're> just, <laughs> who the fuck is up except for me? <laughs> Listen, no fuck about it. I'm starting the car in the morning and everybody's still asleep. So I'm like, so this is it. this is hot 97. Yep, 7 wow. a.m. to 10 a.m. And then at least it was an overnight though. K7 like. used to come in after. I think he came in at no. That nigga was before me, so he was four to seven. Mm-hmm. And then Angie would come in at 10, from 10 to two. Angie or Wendy. Wow. They would come in, and then you know, for me, it was fun back then. 
only having to work on Sunday because none of the bosses are in the building. Right. Mm. So I get to fuck around and put songs in that I wanted to hear. Who's up? Mm. And I did that for five years. Now, I also became the fill-in girl. So when Andrew go on vacation, mm-hmm. they call me. When Wendy go on vacation, they call me. When Flex mm-hmm. go on vacation, they call me. So this is a time when you on the radio, Angie Martinez is on the radio, and Wendy Williams is on the radio at so one radio dope. station. At one radio station, and I'm still an artist now, so I'm still getting the Motown money. Right. I'm living on the west side, beautiful apartment. Faith and Biggie live upstairs. Right. Tony Thompson lives upstairs. Uh, one of Stevie, one of Stevie Wonder's girlfriends lives on my floor. <laughs> right, so one of them. One Stevie Wonder. Can okay. you imagine? Pimpin, pimpin. So I see you literally. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm just saying. I can't. <laughs> I'm just saying. Too much. Too much. Too much. Like, I see you. It was a good I'm time. Dead. It was a good time. It was the beginning of. That black Hollywood glam. Like, Andre started it with that um, ghetto fabulous. Mm -hmm. He started that. And Diddy continued it. Mm -hmm. So now we're having hip-hop parties where it's invitation only. Mm -hmm. And the invitations come to your record label. And every artist is hoping that they get the invitation to Biggie's Platinum Party. But it's kind of like button-down... Looking good. Litter. Right, right, the whole thing. But right before that, it was baggy clothes. It was Carl Kanai. Mm. It was Timberlands. Even the girls had to be baggy. Mm. That was Versace. Right. It right. shifted Versace real hard. Versace silk. It's the mm. 90s. Fur. It was yeah. Versace. It was fur. It Litter. was lipstick. Moschino. And yeah. 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 All that stuff. And and um and tight. And tight stuff. Yeah, yeah. The tight cat, stuff. Cat, cat suits. Was, yeah. I, I yeah. like to say that I yeah. introduced that because yeah. when Mary came, Mary had the the um the boots, the combat boots and the tennis skirts, mm-hmm. but she still had on the baseball jersey. Right. When I came the next month with Where I Want to Be Boy, I s- switched the whole game up with the cat suit. Mm-hmm. And that became it's my look. Cat is everything. What's the name of them? Had the uh, like George, you wearing one right now? <laughs> I'm like George, you wearing one uh, right now? <laughs> it's back. Is this, that a cat suit? It is. It's a calm cat suit. It's a. I, I ain't feel like getting dressed, but it works. Cat suit. Right. It's, it's a silhouette. It's yeah. a you don't gotta pick yeah. a top and a bottom cat suit. I didn't, yes. re- I didn't realize it was a cat suit. <laughs> Excuse Hello. me. Hello. I thought cat suits were black. It's a wolf oh, they suit. They could be whatever. It could be whatever color. It's the shape. It's about the silhouette. Oh, we have on a cat suit. Exactly. Is that okay? Everybody got cat suits on. You're ner- you're learning a lot oh, today. Was, I feel like a, about it was the a fashion off. thing as well as a music thing, fashion. right? And um, oh. yeah, I set the standards. Yeah, it was fashion. It was music. We changed. It, that's when the culture started really shifting. And the other thing that I want to point out, it was the first time I saw black men, young men, and black women in their twenties have high power jobs, right? Mm-hmm. Being A and R's, right? Getting six figures. Nice. Uh, I think this is the period where the music industry. Really, for rap, this is to me that golden era when when a lot of money was just starting mm-hmm. to flow. It was, you know, crystal pouring, big budget videos, right? Um, Polish. Yeah, it was. It was a lot happening. It, w- it was going from the the backpack look yes. to now this this like you said this ghetto fabulous this big you know Ooh, words like big welly big willy right you know you got you had you had Biggie and then then Hove he wasn't Hove then but he was you know Jigga and, right you know what I'm saying and you know, but but and, and even like with, with AZ and them, even what they the, the image back then was this, you know, we getting money and champagne and bubble baths and right, trips, you know what I'm saying? Private yeah, chats, yeah, right. yeah. That it was, was that, all. It was a it was lifestyle. Look. It really was, it was a life. lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm so I'm thankful because who knew then that what we were just doing was now sought after. Everybody wants to be in the 90s. Or they right. Or they stories That's about the fact. 90s. Right. It's definitely not like that no, now. Wanna, it is. Right. No, but they, not, but they want to hear these they stories. They want to hear about it. And right. I'm like, I was it there was on your fun. records, and I was there on your radio reporting. I was there. It was right. fun. People you were definitely a part of the moment. Oh, work. yeah. That For was sure. a good thing. People put in work and yeah. they enjoyed themselves. Like, they, they got to... What is it to reap the fruits of their labor? But you that's the thing they got to. Was like, so wrong. no, but look, Miss <laughs> Jones. Now you're in the podcast world, as are we. You know what I mean? And how is the difference now? Like, you know what I mean? Like, looking back on all of that, the luxury, the 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 the, the you know everything that came with it. Like coming now to it is like, how is the podcast world? Like, well, I'm fairly new because mine has only been up for eight weeks. 
like two months. But what I'm learning feels like we're going back mm-hmm. to the 90s. And I say that because back then in the 90s, when it shifted and it was it was luxury, this and that, you were getting big advances. Mm-hmm. Right. You smart. You were able to take that advance and put down on a house. Right. right. Or buy your mom a house. Right. Get your mom out the hood. Right. You had an opportunity to be self-sustained. Um, right. right. And what I'm learning about the podcast game is there's so many different avenues to be self-sustained. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling 90s again. Right. Yeah. It's just like you make it what it is for That's you. That's right. Guys. That's right. We hustling. We hustling. Yeah. hustling. But do you like do you like uh what do you like the podcast world better than the radio world? Absolutely. Because you can say whatever more you freedom. Want, right? right. Freedom. You can do freedom whatever you want. And the do. time you can do it whenever you want. Like right. niggas, got, excuse me. But yeah, no, we say niggas. Another another bright niggas. side of the podcast world. Right. Right. No. <laughs> no. You you always said what you wanted to say. Right. Yeah. Even you, when I wasn't. Right. <laughs> How do you actually fight? feel about that word, like shock jock? People call you a shock jock. Like, they used to be like, Miss Jones is like a shock jock. And, you know, you come in the line with, like, you, you Wendy and the line. You know what I mean? Like, how is that? Like, how is that, like, interpreted? Or, like, how did that affect your, your career? It only affected me in a negative way because the things that I did, I was shock jocked for and I was punished for. And in Philly, I was fired for. Mm-hmm. And the company that fired me then turned around the next week and allowed Charlemagne to do the same show I was doing. Mm-hmm. Everything I had done before it was popular, he don't was doing. Hate that shit? And he got the money. <laughs> you don't you hate that? But wow. we got something that we would like to play for you that we would like you to expand on. Okay. Let's take it back. Does she need the headphones? Let's, Let's take it back. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking like, what is this? <laughs> I double down because you have shit. some moments. You know what I mean? Like you definitely have had some moments. Let's let's hear this shit. When you get to the heart of the fragrance, a little bit more depth. Uh, what Damn it! Why what you that? called off the wedding and then married her again? I want to know. I want to know. Why you call? All right, you can stop it. <laughs> so she's like, I already know. Cause that was the biggest weekend in like. If you didn't even fuck with Usher that weekend, you were like, Is he gonna marry her? <laughs> His mom's gonna be mad. But is she going to leave him if he don't marry her? It was a mess that weekend. We didn't know. We didn't know. So the weekend passes. It's Monday. No one knows if they got married. This nigga calls wants to promote a cologne. Right. <laughs> like, we, we need answers, sir. And, and we will get to your cologne because I get the business. I want you to win. But you got to give us something to us. Right. <laughs> right. Hello. <laughs> Here's a good spirit. Here's a- <laughs> wow. He said, y'all ignorant. Y'all ignorant as hell. He wasn't with it though. He was. He was. He didn't know. He he he. he you know, Usher had an image. So and being a shock jock though, do you feel a- like that affected your career in certain ways? Like, is this like moments like that? Like, do you think back and be like, hmm, now it's good. Maybe I. Now it's great because y'all mm-hmm. laughing. I'm bringing right. it back, and y'all like, wow, she was saying this shit before uh, Charlemagne. She was saying it before right. whoever. All these new little girls is trying. But like you, like you saying you. They fired you, and then they hired Charlemagne, right? To do the same so stuff. did you feel like, do you feel like it was because you were a woman? Yes, and I want to fuck everybody up. Whoa. Absolutely. Did you want to fight? Everybody. You you being a woman in the 90s. Um, and the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. In the early 2000s, early in the business, uh, business of music and in the radio. Um, how was that? Like, you know... Because it's a different time now, you know, with women and, and women actually standing, you know, standing on their ten, on their toes, and, and, and actually, you know, uh, bossing up. Was it harder then? Because, you know, you, you niggas are niggas. Niggas, pretty girl, niggas want to fuck. Like, you know, niggas is out here selling dreams. So how, how was that? Like. <laughs> hey, did you talk did about you, it? Did you right? date in the industry? Uh, so I did, but see, this is where I probably I should have dated more. more I was always in the a one. Well, that's a perspective. Right. In the industry in the business world, Wall Street dudes, right. whatever. But I was always like a one relationship girl. Mm, sound like and me. so yeah, and so wait. Like, so why do you feel like you should have dated more though? Because, I want to know because after you get out of that relationship, you look back and you realize how many years you spent in that relationship. 
and now you're older, so you're expected to be settling down, mm. but you still haven't had a lot of experience yeah. with oh. copy. You know what yeah. I mean? You only had that one of those two guys. All right, three. And you dated, <laughs> you dated <laughs> in the industry. I dated Dougie. Dougie. F- Dougie Fresh. Oh, first of all, I don't know if everybody knew you dated. Did uh, they know that? I knew that. We okay. lived together. I, I knew that okay, she dated okay, Dougie okay. Fresh. So you, which Dougie Fresh we talking? We talking way back Dougie Fresh? Way back, like. Slick Rick and Dougie Fresh. So Slick Rick was in jail okay. at that time. So this is in the nineties. He got deported. Right. So it was kind of it was from the nineties from the beginning when we met. That's who got me put on Dougie. I walked up to him on the street and started singing in his face. Wow. <laughs> See, look, look at that. We almost went past that. See this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you looking at me like I did it? <laughs> it's all about the moments. <laughs> no, it's all about you the walked, moments. You walked, you walked, regardless. You, yes. You walked up to Dougie Fresh. Where at? On One Hundred Twenty Fifth Street in front of Men's Walkers. Okay. You just happened to be up there, and you just seen him. I was up there getting some eyeglasses on my Medicaid card. Uh huh. And my mom had just died, and uh-huh. I was like down on my luck because I came home from college, and she died like two weeks later, and uh-huh. I didn't know what I was gonna do, and uh-huh. I did not have a plan. But life had to go on, and I had my Medicaid, and I was gonna use it till it ran out. Right. So I was up there, and we saw him walking down the street, and Biz was across the street. Biz Monkey. Yes. Oh, wow. And the guy I was with was like, oh, I know both of them. I know both of them. Who you want to meet? And I'm like, well, since Doug's on this side of the street, <laughs> I'll take Doug for 500 And so right. he went over to Doug and was like, oh, she sings. But my Doug was like, you sing. You know, back then on, on 125th Street, vendors had music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I sung. It was a B-side song from Denise Williams that was playing. And I know everybody's B-side because I was always singing and doing talent Into shows. it. Right. Mm-hmm. And when I sung it, Doug was like, oh, that's fly. You sound good. And I'm about to remake this on my album. Give me wow. a number, I'll call you. And I'm like, it was nice meeting you. Mm-hmm. Good luck with your career. Never thinking that he would call. And then, like, the next day he called. He called the house phone because we ain't had, there was no cell phone. I had. <laughs> and you were so mad that you yeah. didn't sit in that fucking house right, and wait you, so you for, waited the, for You're call. like, damn it. So I called back. I missed him. He called back. And eventually, when we got together on the phone, he was like, I just signed a deal with MC Hammer for, like, millions of dollars, and we're going to California. I don't know what I can do with you just yet, but I don't want to let you go. Like, let's figure it um, out. I love Come God. be a part of my Get Fresh crew. Wow. So I asked my job if I could. I was working at Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, my mom had just, I didn't, I was just trying to figure it out. And right. then um, they wouldn't let me take a leave of absence. So I quit and I went. But you know what's funny? The bitch that was my manager that wouldn't <laughs> let me take the leave of absence Years later, uh-huh. she wound up trying to win a trip to Hot 97, Hot Night Jamaica. <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. You will never. I'll see you on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> it be like that. It be like that. It be what? like you know that. Petty, it be like petty. that. Yeah, you petty. I'm petty too. What? I'm petty. Bitch, no. <laughs> Hell no. You almost had me lose my dreams. That's right, bitch. Hey. And I know she probably looking at it like, damn. She's trying bitch. to tell everybody she, she used to work. Came. That's I right, bitch. She <laughs> came. She wound up on that trip, and I saw her on the plane. And I turned the whole plane against her. Yeah, uh-huh. bitch. Uh-huh. That's the bitch in 17 B. That's right. Put her on the bitch. Matter of fact, let's move her back to 45 B. Let's open the exit <laughs> Ain't door. no 45 right. B even. <laughs> put, her, put her on the wing. <laughs> Bitch. Yeah, ain't no place for that. It's hilarious. So, so you 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 hanging out with Dougie? You on tour with him? Yeah. How did y'all get uh, romantically in in in, gay, in uh in, in intertwined? I don't know because we didn't even like each other in the beginning. We fought because Dougie ain't like to pay on time, and I you know I'm still give me my money. I still have bills, mm-hmm. and I'm not making any money here. But so we didn't like each other. But then I think the more we got to know each other, because Doug always. Had us rehearsing. So we spent a lot of time around each other, and we got to know each other. And when I saw his work ethic, and he really wanted me to win, I think I transferred some of my daddy issue. But I didn't tell you, my dad died freshman year. My mom died right after graduation. Wow. So I think I transferred some of my daddy issue onto him. And this is me now as an adult. Right, and looking I back. I let him take the place of a dad ushering me into... This new world. Uh, Whatever it is. Yeah. He was my protector. Right. This is what He went mean. all out for me. Right. He got me. He helped me. And I say this to this day. Doug enabled me to make a living off of what I love to do, whether I'm with him or not. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Like, who does that? Right? So yeah, yeah, That's yeah, cool. Y'all became a couple. Yeah. Are you guys still Move. friends? We are. Okay. 
I be I'm trying to explain to Mano though. Yeah. <laughs> that apartment with Biggie and Faith was upstairs. We was downstairs oh, in 2K. Mano, uh, this is what, what we be trying to explain to you though. What's, what's that? About yeah. relationships. Like there's other things. Yeah. You like know what? what I mean? You see how they was working together, love works. loving on each love other. Works. Yeah, you know but what I mean? it wasn't in hindsight. Mm-mm, that's not, it wasn't good. We should have <laughs> left the, we should have, we should have loved each other as like brother and sister or kindred something mm. because we were better at working rooms. Mm-hmm. Right, then being lovers and being commingling. That's, that's what I'm I trying see. to tell them, though. They keep telling my love works. Tell <laughs> that, that the Quavo. Work, tell that the Quavo. Okay. Right? She broke up with him. What time for the home? That's right. Tell that the Quavo. <laughs> what time for the homie? Take care. Okay. Bye, Bentley. Take Listen, care. Be blessed. Check this out. I told them before. I was trying to tell these young ladies here that sometimes you mess the relationship up when you put <laughs> the bed in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. We can be like work, work, working, uh, working together, brother and sister, business partners. But once we start playing around and laying on top of each other and stuff like that, waking up in the morning, like different things start to happen, and the things dynamics, right? The dynamic of the relationship starts to change. You never yes. said it in that way. I did you say it because he always now. says it in the it. opposite way. Yeah, he says He'd it be in like, "Yo, way. if we can't fuck." I don't know what else Ooh, we could do. Wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not to me, not to us, but I'm just like, okay. we're blessed to even know him in this light that's, that's because honestly, I said. Did I say that? that's pretty yes. much, look at episode 30, 32. <laughs> like, like, no, I'm just saying it's hard for me to have. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> Since you said. <laughs> well, I, maybe I did. You, maybe that, I you sure it did. Way. It was my first episode here. <laughs> I was like, damn, word. <laughs> But no. how well, House and Ever came out, <laughs> yeah. right? I'm, I'm pulling you out, man. Yeah, pull me out. Right. It's all right. You don't be right. knowing how to get out. It's sometimes. not always the best thing. It's not Absolutely. always the best thing. Sometimes <laughs> it's best for you to just, like, work together, be friends. And but you got to know who you are. Absolutely. Yes. And I feel like when Absolutely. you're in your 20s, yes. you still think you can conquer the world. And even if this fucks up, there'll be more chances, more relationships. And and sometimes you can never get that back. Mm-hmm. True. And you never get those opportunities back. And you fucked it up because you saw him talking to this woman, but she could have changed both y'all lives mm-hmm. because she owned a movie house. See what I'm saying? Uh, See what I'm saying, right, That's what I'm talking you about. <laughs> no. But you no. were scared that you might lose him or you were scared that you might lose her or I was whatever. was an ego. And he was <laughs> an ego. We both were an ego. We were kids. Oh, right. talk See, about that the, ego. Georgie loved that. That's the thing. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying, though, right? We were so, kids. You were, you, were, you were getting in your feelings at times when it could have been business on the table, but because you were in your feelings, you wasn't able to see the whole table the right way. Well, he was in his feelings as well. Because, now remember, where I want to be, boy, video, Buster stopped by. Oh. Ja Rule and them stopped by. Uh-oh. It was people there. And yeah, and, and, it was and, other and men just there. Just for the love of Jonesy. And Everybody and loved And he was me. like, so what them niggas over here doing? Right. But he was never, he was passive aggressive. He would never be so out. What's his sign? Virgo. I'm a Virgo. Oh, oh, look. Sense. I'm not passive look. aggressive. Look, 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 look. No, you I'm passive aggression. Passive you, have the, you have the ability to be. But I love Virgos because y'all are I'm not, thinkers. And I'm y'all not passive think aggressive y'all disrespecting me right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm a... Just aggressive. We getting cheers. We getting cheers from the side. I'm just aggressive. Because he a Virgo, too. We got the just same aggressive. birthday. I need you to stop lying on this show right About now. About what? I need you to stop. Wait. Stop I'm, acting like you just so tough all the time. And then he can tell okay. the truth after I go. Okay. Oh. He's showing off for you. That's what he's doing right now. So what? Miss Jones, he's showing off so for you. So what? I'm showing off for Miss Jones. No, you're not showing no, off. No, he's, no, like, he's like sweating. No, she I'm here. like, what's going on over, over here? She got an X-Men... Suit on and she oh, a lot going on. Me, yeah. Jean, Jean Grey, Grey. Huh? Jean Grey, hello. Jean Grey, like come you on, know, man. if you know, you know. If you know, if you know, you know. That's me out. Anyway, <laughs> I know you. Just I know, know you though. But yes, Miss Jones, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to know who you Absolutely. are, and I don't think anybody knows who they are in, the, in their twenties. Mm-hmm. Right, indeed. That ain't the time. Fair. That's, That's fair. right. That's a fact. It's just the time to experience. You get hurt. You you learn things or whatever, and then you don't realize it until later on. And then you might reflect might the bridge, or because yeah. y'all saw each other's worst, you you don't want to go back there again. But again, we're we're kids. You have the the, the right to um to fail in relationships mm-hmm. and to learn and build on it. 
it only becomes problematic when you keep repeating the same thing. Wow. Why why did y'all why did y'all end the relationship? I mean, how long was it? It was five years, you said? It was a long time. I think we were exhausted. We were really just exhausted. Like, like just tired of tired of, like because I, 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 I was it was it him with other girls or Well, he always had two Baby's moms, they were always in the picture because he's very, anyone that knows Doug knows he is very connected to his sons. That's right. And then we had a a, a baby that didn't, a pregnancy that was yeah, carried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. And, um, but the odd thing is Doug and my oldest son, Jalen, are like this. Mm-hmm. That's why when you said, do y'all, are y'all still best friends? I'm like, we are, but I'm thinking, he talks. <laughs> so you already had your son already. Oh, Jalen came after. After, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, and he has a son. Jalen's like they're like weeks apart. Wow. Yeah. So it was mess. It was a lot. It was messiness. But I feel like the connection. I feel like when my dad died, the universe brought someone like Doug because I could have gone down a different road and been a drug dealer's wife. Because mm-hmm. I was you in like, that element. This? Yeah, one twenty fifth. You well, could have met anybody. Well, they were around. I'd be like, hey, you could have no, met never anybody. Been a drug dealer's wife. I know. No, I'm just saying. Sorry. I, <laughs> I know. Stop. Stop. For sure. In a good way, right? In a good way. But I was vulnerable. You see how I bring it back around? Yeah. Right. right. I, I like. Someone that. gotta do it. <laughs> so, right. Check out the podcast. Right. Right. Morning show reunion on YouTube. Absolutely. So, in a good way, I, I, he, he helped me and ushered me there. Mm-hmm. And even though it didn't work out for us. Here we are years later, and he's like the best dad figure to my son, Jalen. That's, that, wow. that's beautiful. Isn't that Jaylen? crazy wow. how that's life great. works? That's so me. That's, so, right? that's so me. We almost fucked it up with yeah. the fucking. That's but dope. no, you didn't. We almost, almost fuck it fucked it up with the fucking no is a real thing. But I don't believe that because I believe that was for you. Right. Well, right. You know, <laughs> I, you know, I have a soulmate person in my life as well, and it's like we're the best of friends. But at the same time, I know that together – as a as a partnership, yeah. like a as my life partner, it might not work. But when we aren't together, we we, we get each other. Yeah. You know, yeah. but call it, me for anything. I could call him for anything. Like it's just like See, that. That's, and, yeah. and the love is unconditional. But you know, that's a thing though. Like they say, like soulmates, <laughs> wound mates, wound mates is a thing too. And you know what else? There's something else. Yeah, it's. Twi- twin souls. Twin, twin souls. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I mean, twin, twin flames. I'm all in that shit. Like, That's what I yeah. think me and Tuggy are, twin flames. I hope you but niggas you know this is not a love show. From each other. <laughs> Listen. I, I, How about I that? You talk about love <laughs> all the time. We don't talk <laughs> about no goddamn and love. You talk about love every episode. Son. He's connected. <laughs> keeps a, he keeps a tab on me through my son. He mm-hmm. think I don't know. I know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you feel with you uh, dating someone else? Now? No, like back then. Like, because you went and found you another. Guys, no like that but y'all could have eight bitches on the side mm-hmm. and impossible mm-hmm. the minute i look at someone it's a problem all bets off and somebody so, smile at you oh yeah that's not oh. somebody smiles at me <laughs> right and somebody i'm fucked up for yep. not telling them how dare you show me your pretty teeth and mm-hmm. smile mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's, how, that's that's pretty that's 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 pretty accurate yeah um <laughs> let, let me well, let, we were kids. let's let's let, let me let me ask you let's spin back towards the radio right you you're on the radio, but you on the mornings, Sundays. How did you make the transition to get the biggest show on Hot 97? Because I, I want people to understand exactly what I'm saying. Because for people that that are not familiar with with Miss Jones and and who she is and what she has accomplished in 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 the game, I need y'all to really understand that she really had the biggest show on Hot 97 at prime time at in the hot 97 era way before streaming and way before internet and social media i was i was social media yeah there you go all that news I was social media yeah so if something happened on my show they could hear any artist could hear what what was happening in new york and call whoever i was talking about in la and they would call on that warm line now the warm line i remember the warm line it's a private number yeah, private number emergency love only. that the hotline emergency only for our bosses right, right. It was social media, and everyone wanted to call. Jim Jones wants to call because Mace is up there fronting, and then Cam yeah. wants to call because Cam right. is up there, and Mace just wants to pray right. for everybody, and then you got Superhead right. calling and Coogee Rap online. Right. One, and the right. one. It was amazing, but we were social media. Yeah, yeah, you had a lot going on because 
I had wow. never even heard of Superhead until I listened to that that show because you had it up there with that book and everything. Oh my God. That was yeah, that was that was that. Yeah, I remember that. I that was a lot. Book. She tried to run out to <laughs> you the got show the interview, and I'm like, this is like the biggest interview of my career. I can't let this bitch leave. Say that again. <laughs> I said she tried to run out the studio mid interview because she didn't know that I had Coogee Rap, who's her. Ale- well, it was her son's father, but her ex, who mm-hmm. allegedly she sucked him off until her nose bled. Mm-hmm. And it was a lot of things she was saying. What, what, how does that know. work, sucking off to First the nosebleed? I've never right? tried that. I'm like, what does what, one what have is to do is with the other? Thing? Look, you what does one have to do with the other? I need to understand that. Episode <laughs> five. Is that a <laughs> thing? You <laughs> have to listen to episode five. I heard a lot of your not nosebleed. 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 Mm. I don't know how I heard that. A lot I don't get it. I never <laughs> heard a nosebleed. Yeah, like I don't see the. So, so these are the interviews that we bring back on my podcast that people are like, wait, what? Hold it down. Yeah, so I think that was episode five of the Miss Jones Reunion podcast. But in way. <laughs> what she didn't know is that I had already researched her story, called G Rap, because I had done records with G Rap. Right. And this bitch was calling my phone back then. She didn't connect the two that that's the same as Jones. Who, mm-hmm. So when she came on the show, I had him on hold. Mm. And his wife at the time, Ma Barker. Yeah, Ma Barker. Yeah, I know Ma Barker. Yeah. She was on the phone too. Oh, I remember that. That's right. It was spicy. It got, yeah, it got spicy I up see. there. That's, that's social media. That's the yep. song. What that social media. But how did you get that spot? Oh, so so five years, and I'm just doing weekends, and I'm not thinking. I'm still trying to chase Motown and the records, and then, so the money was running out. Mm-hmm. Motown, Andre had gotten fired. George Jackson, who was now taking over, I think he had just died, or yeah, he, he had just died. It was a mess at Motown, and I had ten thousand dollars left. That was coming. It hadn't even come. It was coming in drive shows in Panama on New Year's Eve. I had to think fast. So I said, I got to get out of this expensive-ass apartment, number one. I found an apartment in Harlem for, like, half the price. Um, and I said, if I can just get a job, I can manage. But I didn't know, like, when you are even a limited of a celebrity. You can't work at McDonald's or something. Right. right. Like, like, yeah. Sometimes you got to work at McDonald's. You know right. what I mean? But it's so, we make it so hard for each other to to do mm-hmm. that. So, so, um, so I'm sitting in my apartment amongst my packed furniture and boxes. No one in Hot 97 knows what's going on because I didn't yeah. tell people my business. No one knew what was going on. Right. right. And I'm sitting amongst packed boxes ready to move in a couple of days. And I'm like, sad. Tracy calls. And she's like, are you okay? And I was like, I'm fine. I guess she could hear it in my voice, the worry. And she goes, so here's the thing. I'm thinking of making some changes to the morning show. Who was in the morning? It was Ed Love and them. Ed Lover had just left. He left. He left and went to L.A. He got a big deal right, to go do mornings in L.A. Right, right, right. And she was building back up the show. And she had brought someone in named Maya who didn't last long and wound up suing the station. Wow. I don't even remember what the fuck for. Wow. So she was building it up. So she was going to put Steph Lover, Kurt Flirt, who was Ed Lover's sidekick. Right. And she wanted a third person. And she asked me if I would do it. Wow. Like, are you kidding me, God? This is it. And then I try to play hardball. Well, it depends how much you pay. Bitch. <laughs> I already said yes. Wait, but you only need to do tomorrow. Money. Let's see what the money is. You had me at I'm changing morning. <laughs> right. So I asked her, she offered, I was like, Can you do I thought I was really negotiating. And it really wound up being a low ball number. I think I said, Can you do two hundred a day or two fifty a day or something like that? She was like, I can do that. Mm-hmm. Cause she knew. But so I was like, I have a job, right. and I get to do radio. Like, I know what I'm doing. And right. and and because now the artists are going to be coming on the show, maybe I can get another deal. Right. I just started. I was rejoicing. Working it out. Was singing still your focus at this point? Like, you still trying to... I still was trying. To, to, to basically, you know keep a hold of the of the singing as being your primary your primary uh well now my secondary huh it was, it was now my secondary it was now your secondary but you didn't know that yet you did you still wanted it to be your yeah, your primary I, I, I did I still do but when I started doing mornings I was so tired it's so exhausting right because you gotta be up you gotta be up when everybody sleeps that's right and right. then you gotta get up and act like you really up and right. read them fucking newspapers yeah and not just read them Read it back to yourself how you going to say it to the people yeah. to make them not want to turn the dial. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of brain stuff that at early in the morning, and so you crash. At 10 a.m., you crash, but that's when all the record executives start coming in. 
Right. So I should have been making calls, but my ass is asleep. Right. So the record stuff still didn't happen because I, I couldn't do it all. Wow. And you started to, to basically go. Transition. You had to decide. Right. You, you went straight into it, though, and you started to go into this place where you, you, you were singing, but now there's another career path calling for you. Sometimes we don't know where we're going to end up. Who knows? We, right. You didn't, you didn't know. I had no. I was, knew. I was working for rent. I was trying to save my life. Mm-hmm. And right. I knew she gave me an opportunity, and I needed to take it seriously. Absolutely. So you basically started as being like the girl on Ed Lover's show. Well, no, it was now he was gone. It was Steph Lover. Steph Lover, I'm, yeah. Kurt yeah. Flirt, and I was out in the van, and right. I would talk and do the gossip. And, right. and then one day, and I, Steph never wanted me, in my opinion. She never really wanted me there. No? Well. Competition. Right. right. And I understand that now. Mm-hmm. But she said some things to me that morning, and I spun around and was like, what did you say? Because it was just a buildup. She was always saying something slick. Mm-hmm. And that day I had just had enough. And we didn't know that the mics were still on. And we just, we, it was bad. I got magic. The sales people started running down and was like, in the, in the glass, there was a glass window. Right, right. And they're like, turn it off. <laughs> and we're just going and going and going. And then all of a sudden, Tracy, Tracy came <laughs> back there. It was like, Paul Dio, in my office, wow. <laughs> and then I think someone, whoever was supposed to do middays, I think it was Sonny the, from the cook Sunny, show. Sonny, I remember Sonny. I think Sonny, it was Sonny or somebody. They came in and f- fixed them, turned the mics off and tried to take the station to commercial. And, right. Um, and then I, Steph talked to Tracy, or I talked to Tracy, and I, I knew, I knew Tracy's Sagittarius. Mm-hmm. You got to just bow down. Right. Be humble. <laughs> right. You will never win with a Sagittarius. Mm-hmm. You will never. So I was like, I'm so sorry I disrespected you in the station. It will never happen again if you still allow me to stay on the show. I'm sorry. I let my emotions get the best of me. Right. No, I'm not this person. And she was like, thank you. And then she called Steph. And supposedly, Steph started going off on Tracy. So the next thing I knew, Steph started going off on Tracy. And the next thing I knew, Tracy said, changing the morning show. I'm going to put you in Fat Man Scoop. Everything happens for a reason. Wow. Right. Everything happens. Her flirt will be out in the truck. Right. right. And you wow. and Scoop will lead mornings. Wow. But her problem, like, you never did anything to Steph. She just had an issue because you were there. Yeah. And we were kids. Mm-hmm. We, you know, in hindsight, I'm I'm grateful because had Listen. it not been for her mm-hmm. starting with me, I would not have gotten to mornings that way. So you right? think that that was the moment? What you think? That, that got you that opportunity. Because once I got that spot with me and Fat Man Scoop, me and him both, Right. Y'all know Scoop out. is the one that does the party record. That's right. We so. know yeah. Scoop very well. Yeah. And we both had a point to prove, <laughs> we, you know. No, no it's going to be an issue between us. Because he was coming from overnight. <laughs> what? Exactly. I don't mean, what? He bothers me all the time. What is it? it don't matter. It's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. Like, yeah, I promise you it's a thing. Okay. okay. It's my little sister, but she acting crazy. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even do nothing. Uh, she just trying to but God works in mysterious ways and, and when, you look <laughs> at it, when you look at it if you look at everything you're unfolding it all was it all like things were moved out of place for new things to come in and that's just how it worked out so everything worked out for the best for you God was on your side and then right. I moved, and then I was moved out for other things to come mm-hmm. in right, right but that's no we, we, we want to stay right where you we want to we don't want to talk about when you was moved out we want to talk about so now you and Fat Man Scoop. Y'all, right. y'all got this, this this spot. At what point did you say to yourself, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because nobody it wasn't a lot of people doing this. Like you were one of them. And I think maybe Wendy. But you you, you got to a place where you was like, you know what, I'm gonna go for the more juicy things and I'm a I'm a I'm a live in this shit up. I'm gonna say what people not saying, I'm gonna do what people not doing. When did you make that conscious decision to do that? I think it was. I think it was then. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I think it was when once she gave me the green light that I'm now the co-host. Right. Mm. I knew what the co-host was supposed to be. She's like, I got the juice. It, 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 you was like easily con- considered like out of control at, at one point. But you know, Tracy knew what I was. They used to laugh at me in the in the meetings because I was always that person. So you had to think she knows who I am. Mm-hmm. She right. knows who she's putting in here. Mm-hmm. Give her what she wants. Right. And she used to pull me to the side and go, that was so funny what you said about this one this morning. Oh, my God. 
don't ever tell them that I laugh. But so, wow, yeah. And what was your relationship with with uh with Wendy Williams? So Wendy had gone at that time, but me and Wendy used to. I used to when I was doing Sundays. Right. Used to see each other in the elevator. She'd be coming in, sometimes drunk. Hi. All types of stuff. Well, yeah, and I didn't realize that she Cocaine was Cocaine was a hell then. of a drug, too. It was just a lot of a lot of giggling. That can't we just <laughs> I we see. just reconciled me and Wendy. Uh-huh. What over what? Um because uh her and her husband supposedly tried to have me murdered. Whoa. Wait, and what? It was in the headlines. Is it headlines? Yeah, it was all over. Lisa Evans reported it. Really? So, and so that's how Mr. C came on your show. So so Wendy Williams, they so I used to go up to hang out with her because remember right. I'm filling in for her and yeah she and I she and I were like the black sheep. Well, why right. get you killed though? Because we all we both talked that slick talk. Right, right. And nobody fucked with us like that really. Even though I was still friends with the artists, they weren't friends with her. Mm-hmm. Right. But I would try to explain she don't mean no harm, but sometimes maybe she did. I don't know. I was just, just doing her thing. Right. And then she got. Sent to Philly. Well, not sent, but they let her go. Right. Because she kept coming at Diddy and them all the time with that gay rapper shit. And enough is enough. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So Tracy let her go and she wound up in Philly. Right. And so um, now it's me and Scoop. Wendy's not even there. So there's a huge lane. Someone at the station has to be the entertainment news person. Mm. Why won't it be Jonesy if I'm starting the day? That's right. right. So I learned a lot. And I wasn't afraid. You can't be afraid. You just have to go for it. But where did you and her go wrong at? I don't know to this day. So you're you telling me to this day that reports came out that they was trying to knock you off, but you don't know where that came from? You ain't asked no questions? Who am I asking? I mean, you're friends now. I mean, I would be well, like, so, so why'd you want to kill me? So <laughs> like, what happened, you know? um, We even when she came back to New York and she was working at BLS, our competition, well, right. not really our competition, but a competing black station, she and I would still talk. She would have to sneak behind her husband's back because he always thought I was a threat to her position. Mm. That whole, it can only be one black girl. It always seems like it was oh. him. Like, every every story we hear, I feel like it's always him. Yeah. But anyway. And so the the, the, the threat came from, but, but throughout the years, like, Wendy would always call my father, my biological father died. He didn't raise me. But when he died, Wendy called out the blue whispering, sending condolences. Right. That's crazy. So we were all, so there was not a, we never fell out. It's just that nigga Kevin right. was. Was it that he felt like you were the, the, the younger, fresher version of what she was doing? Of course. Mm. And I was a she threat. She was in a way of her money. It was a threat. And, but right. I was, but, but That's I never was. And in the same market. She was in a way and we're in the of same her market. money. But. Which is his money. Wow. <laughs> right. But I was never saying anything. They would always say shit about me. And then at some point, I had had enough. Mm-hmm. And then I started saying shit that I knew about her that no one else knew about her. I started That'd saying my crazy. shit. Like, if we going to say stuff. Since we say it. Don't you hate that, though? When somebody, like, you know I you know, know you. I know. <laughs> you know I and know the still, ins and out of you. When you still chatting? I'm not that safe. Sounds like Georgie and Mayno. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I know mad shit. That's what I'm saying. Why are you still no, chatting? I know mad shit. I don't know mad shit. And so That's all it. those years, now now I'm out of radio. I'm home. And when that shit came on the news, I was on vacation with my then husband. Okay. And my oh, phone. Hold on, because we're going to get to that too. So, so, <laughs> so what exactly came out in the news? Radio rival DJ tries to plan murder on on competing DJ, and it's I'm on vacation and my phone starts ringing. I'm like, everybody knows I'm gone. Who's calling internationally? And it's my best friend Sharice from Changing Faces. Do you mind if I? Yeah, I don't mind. Right. Yeah. Okay, she's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, hey, I bitch, remember them. They trying to do you mind if they shoot you off? Oh shit. Because she's. Like, Right. Uh, hold on. I'm like, what you talking about? She goes, turn on the news. And I turn on the news because I'm just coming in from the pool. Like, nigga, when you coming outside, this man trying to take my lo- my chair. And mm-hmm. I turn on the news and I see the split screen. And it's me and Wendy. And I turn it up. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then I tell my husband at the time. And he's like, don't worry. We're going to take care of that shit. Turn the lights <laughs> back off. Like, he's not even moved. Right. He's like, I keep telling you, we're going to take care of it. So I never heard nothing else about it. When I got back to work, Envy said, 
Kevin said to tell you that sh- that shit ain't real. Like it ain't nothing behind that. And my husband at the time was like, I told you we it was, was handled. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Got you. But still, the threat was there. Like I don't know if it's handled. I don't right. know if some stupid little boy is trying to win Kevin's graces. Right. Runs up. It's dark when I come to work. Right. Niggas can pop out from anywhere Absolutely. and say, I, I got it for you. You don't know. Mm-hmm. So that that shit was still lurking all these years. Like So crazy, because that's like like the earliest versions of trolling, if you really think about it. Like so you know what I mean? I am social media again. <laughs> <laughs> like that's social what trolling is. is. Yeah. I'm wow, that's that's that's, that's all. I didn't I didn't realize that that happened. Um, and all those years. All those years that shit stayed out there with me never knowing. Is the gunman lurking? You know, right. now right. I got kids and I'm not married. Mad no more. anxious. And so stuff. did y'all, did y'all feel s- protected? Did or y'all whatever. speak about it? So that's the thing. I was on IG, Miss Jones official. Miss Jones official. Ms. Jones and After Dark, any random night of the week. Yes, right. <laughs> and I was talking here. about it to Queen's Flip because he didn't believe it because he was young when that shit Shout happened. Shout out to Queen's Flip. Yeah, we got a show coming that's my, out. That's Thursday. my little homie. That's my little homie. I love Queen's Flip. Yeah, you love Queen's Flip. But that's that's the, that's that's the little 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 homie. So he didn't know. <laughs> he didn't know. Of course he didn't know. He wasn't outside back then. Right. All this stuff was happening. Right. Wait. Wait a minute now. Right. It's a little I'm, homie. I'm not insult. I'm not cosigning. No right. insults. No. Because no. me and Flip there got a no show. In, no, insults. no. That's shout out to, my shout guy. Out to y'all. That's my guy. I'll call him after this. We, we have okay. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm done. Miss Jones, like, 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 edit this you shit. Know, you know the thing is that uh. no, when I call him my little homie, like I ain't, I ain't your little homie, but that's my, that's my thing. Uh. So it's all good. Okay, okay. No, cause don't fuck up the money. We never we gonna got fuck a up show the money. coming out starting April eight, and, and we want you, to, and we want you to do the exactly. show. Flip been here. Flip been, flip been to the kitchen. I know, cause he was bigging you up. Of when course. I was like, Go to Maino. Have of a good course. time. That's my guy. That's my guy. That's my guy. I love. So anyway, he was asking me about the murder thing. Someone tagged Mr. Um, C, Mr. C, who used to DJ for Wendy and run with her and Kev back in the day. He right. calls and he's like, well, all that shit was Kevin. Just like when I was running with the transsexuals and getting my, <laughs> he just went right into it. And I was like, <laughs> you know how white people, when they don't know what to say, they go like this. Yeah. Blink, blink. Nicki Minaj, blink. <laughs> I was so white at that moment. And he just kept talking. And he was like, yeah, because, you know, I like to. I like to get sucked off by the whoa, chin. and I was like, oh, shit. and I let him go because in radio you know you're supposed to not interrupt your guests. You hear that? You let them talk, That's and then right. you edit later on. Mm-hmm. And if you need to insert your voice to reintroduce the break, you do it then. But you let them talk. So he was like, me and Wendy, we you know once once her and Kevin broke up, me and her talked, and we good now. You want me to reach out to Wendy? And I was like, you can reach out to her. I don't care. You know, basically, yeah, reach out to Wendy. So he reached out to Wendy on Tuesday, called me and said, Wendy says she would love to talk to you. She said you was at her engagement party. Mm. And I said, I was. I take this to hold her down. So he <laughs> said, here's her number. And I gave her yours. So I called my team. Right. And while I'm talking to my team, guess who's on my other line calling me? Wendy. She's like, oh, my God. How are you? Jones. Oh, my God. And so. I sound just like her. <laughs> Literally, that's a great impression that right was there. great. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God, Jones. I have missed you. How you doing? Where are you? Okay, that's too far. <laughs> I'm never coming. <laughs> I'm not. I'm really not coming. So then, two days later, bitch, I'm on my way to your house. I'm in the town car. I'm like, bitch, you don't got my address. She goes, bitch, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like on her way to my house. And this wow. was two Saturdays ago. And then last Saturday, I spent the night at her house. Wow. So I say, I got it. Say, right. Three months ago, I would have never thought I'd be doing a podcast. I would have never thought I would have talked to Envy. In your wildest mind, honestly. I would have never think thought about I'd have been sitting here with you uh, and meeting you guys. In the fucking kitchen, nigga. Life right is happening. The kitchen is throwing down on me. We run shit. It's smelling so good. Life is happening. With my favorite wine, Cooper and Theo. That's right. With your favorite. Where's the wine at? Come on. Somebody get the wine. 
Life is happening. Somebody go downstairs and get the wine. Somebody go downstairs and get the wine. And and spending the night please at Wendy's house. We didn't even do that shit back then. Right. You know what I mean? So life is happening. God is so real. Life is happening. Yep. It's downstairs. No, but that is really dope. That's like a kind of like a full circle moment in some real weird personal way. I'm here. Because we reached out to you for you to come on our show, and I didn't know that right. you would want me to be on your show, but we always were good. I just, your shit is like, and I'm rebuilding, but y'all have shown me so much support. Wait, our shit is like, that feels good. No, like, no, like, <laughs> no, yeah. no, I want you to understand, and I'm going to have a moment with you. I need you to understand. I need you to get in my, like, like come into my world real quick. Do you understand what you meant to me? When you when when you gave me the opportunity to come on the, on the radio and crack the mic and talk about my experiences and talk about all the drama that I was going through in the street or talk about you know what out what my dreams were you know because one thing about being a street nigga quote unquote is that if you really active in the street you know that your that, that you really want to get out and I I wanted to be somewhere else I wanted to be something and I wanted my niggas to be something, and 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 I and I like told them, and I and I and I like persuaded them to to like let's try music. So you 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 giving me the opportunity to come up, sit on your show when you had the biggest show in the tri-state area, I would never forget that. Thank you. So so for me to you know have a little show going on, it's. When 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 Coach said, "Yo, we want we want to get Miss Jones on," I said, "Yo, we gotta definitely do that oh, yeah. because you you, you 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 are a, a milestone in my journey." I was excited. You, Me you too. understand? I was excited. Thank Me you. Too. I saw my mentor. I was ready. Thank you 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 a milestone in my journey. That's Thank that's you. your wine that I bought for you specifically. And I appreciate that. That's right. See, you listen. That's right. I love a man that listens. That's right. And follows right. through. For listening to me. Yeah, it was, it was, it was real. Didi, leave me yes. the fuck alone, please. I'm vibing. <laughs> leave me the fuck alone. Question. I'm in my zone. We don't got five nothing. We going. We trying to figure it out. We go. This has never happened oh, on the show before. Oh, this yeah, has never happened on the show before. Okay, the song. It's a new song. Oh, what? Right. 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 Good question, Peter. I apologize for whatever I caused you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a great question. Definitely. So the Tsunami song was a song that was created by a producer um, that Tracy hired when I came back from Philly in right. 2004. His name was Rick Delgado. Rick Delgado used to also produce Opie and Anthony. They were real, real shock jocks from... And still, kind of, right? I don't Are even they know if they're on, still doing it, but... They're on so, Sirius, I thought. Okay, but, so yeah, you know yeah. the spirit. Yeah. Why so, did they create it? He created it because he thought it was funny. Oh, but it was a tsunami that happened. A tsunami and happened and he... Massive people died. And he thought it was funny, but if you look at his history of his creation... Credible. They had people having Credible. sex in the cathedral. So this is the type of stuff that they do. This is right along the lines of what he did. He was I'm about to start doing friend. that. This is about to be sex right here. No, no, no. This is no, not a cathedral. All due no, no, respect. No, no. Thank about, you. It's about to be some shit going on right here. Right here. In the but can so you listen to the rest of the story? Because this is the thing. Did, when he did the song, <laughs> he had Envy, um, the, he had the people on the show sing, do the song. Tay. Tay. Her real name is Tasha. Shout out to Tasha. She was singing on the song. Hey, Tay. So follow the story. I am home. None of you guys knew this because I had Zoom back then. Right. The station paid like it was kind of like a Skype. The station paid Verizon to come into my house because I had just had Jalen. And I was breastfeeding. Okay. So they set it up up. where I could look into a TV monitor in my home. 
and see the studio, and and Vietnam could see me. Right. But no one was supposed to know. So we were acting like Miss Jones was back in the studio. So when the song got played, and people, the first time it played, no one even knew. It was that goddamn Dr. Jekyll came in at 8 o'clock and said, can I hear it? We had not played at that time. No one would have known. But anyway, people were upset. Like, they got really fucking mad. By 9 a.m., sponsors were pulling money. Damn. They pull us off the air. We're suspended. The lawyers come in. They want to question everybody separately because this is a big deal. That's the story, though. Who, That's... who made the song? Who's on the song? So they start questioning everybody individually. So Envy, they go, so when did Miss Jones, you know, when did she come up with the song? Envy goes, what? Miss Jones ain't been here since Thanksgiving. Right. They're like, what? But they said Tasha, she was singing on the song. He said, That's not Tarsha. That's Tasha. Wow. Tay. But see, the bosses at the station, they knew that. And they didn't tell corporate. They were going to put my head on the platter and let me take the fall for it. They knew I wasn't in the building. Wow. So if I physically haven't been here since Thanksgiving, since Thanksgiving, and I gave birth December 15th, and I'm still not back in the building, how could I push a button? Right. Absolutely. How could I write a song? So they just said you Then it became, but it's your show. Yeah. Really? Really, Nick Cannon wilding out? Y'all know y'all can swoop down and end me at any given time, so don't try and fucking say it's wow, my show now. so you really didn't have nothing to do with that. Had nothing to do with it. Wow. But I will take accountability for the fact that I could have shut it down and said don't play it. Right. But at that point... But you didn't think it was like a thing. No, I knew it was. How did it, it go, was, though? Miss Info stood up and tried to... She tried to... I felt like she was being separate and trying to put Envy and them out there. Like, mm. I told y'all not to do it. And for me, if we a team, don't do that shit in public. Right. Like, we go down together. Yes. Right. Yeah. You're going down, go down together. You're going down with me. Right, if I go right, through, right, going through. right, right. I'm so. not. No, yeah, I'm just kidding. You're going down with me. Everybody in this motherfucker. I don't have a problem with Miss Info. I actually never saw her again after that. Shout right. out to Minya. Wow. I heard after that, she tried to get me kicked off the show, and she tried to take the show. That's what I heard. I don't know if it's true or not, but. You had a, you had a problem with Miss Info? No. Well, I she think it's just radio, period. It was a tsunami thing. Yeah. After oh, that, right, me and her argued. And it made it look like I was standing up for the tsunami song, right. when in fact I was just standing up for us being unified, a, un, a united front. They basically wanted you to take the blame for everything. They wanted everybody wanted to get it off of them. But she's so they Asian was though. To sacrifice you. Isn't like that a thing? Well, yeah, because <laughs> that tsunami song was against Asians. Yeah. But she was there when they were doing it. So my thing is, bitch, you was there. You should have stopped them. Before. You were physically there, and I was not. Now that the lights are on, it's not the time to separate yourself. That was my mm-hmm. position. But it was probably a bad position. And we were Blah, kids. blah, blah. <laughs> I'm just like, look, but at the, the end point of the is, day. it wasn't me. And again, once again, my head is on the motherfucking platter for some shit that I didn't do now. Granted, I probably did some other shit, lots of other shit that slid under the radar. Right. And that was just my karma coming back. But that's the answer to the question about the tsunami song. It wasn't me. Wrong, Tasha. That's it. But it ain't always a we were kids situation. Sometimes it's people's character. Right. I just was saying we was kids. I know, I know, I know, I know. Just make it nice. I'm just going, I'm going to put it out there for I'm you. I'm like, what was your sign again? Because I'm a Scorpio. I'm a Scorpio. Oh, yeah. You know, I like, I like when you rub my shoulder. Yeah, Dougie did too, Virgo. So, <laughs> stop. stop, nigga, please. Please, I'm begging you. Who are you so both these niggas Down here. Down on my knees. Woo! Begging you. We say say nothing. Hey. We got motherfucking Miss Jones in here. You niggas is throwing me signs. So, again, had it not been for DJ Envy telling the Shout lawyers that Miss Jones hadn't been in this building since November, so there's no way possible she could have done a tsunami song, they would have fired my ass then. Wow. Because the lie just keeps going. You know what I mean? Right. So, thank you, Envy, again. A that's lie. crazy. Shout out to Envy. You don't have no proof. Shout out to Envy. Yeah. But, the boss but knows, that's the but crazy he didn't want to lose his job. That's crazy. It's all right. Because I love Envy. Like, to me, I'm just like, he taught me some stuff because I interned for him for uh, at some oh, point. Okay. I did. No, he did. And he I, I, he taught me that. Exactly what he what you just said. It's what just is that like, he taught yeah. you? I just want to hear what he taught you. It's just the fact that to be man, loyal. Yeah, like no, I just want to hear what she what he, what he exactly talks. Exactly that though. It's just be loyal. Be loyal have and integrity. Yeah. integrity. Have integrity. I, I'm teaching that. Know your value. I'm out here teaching. Know that. your value. Don't. I'm teaching don't that. Know your that value is the main and be, one. Be a whore. I'm yeah. teaching all those lessons over here. Seriously. Everybody yeah. that come here learn the same thing from me. 
We gotta sift Integrity. through a lot of lessons though. Both over here. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Both are great teachers. Right, but yeah, shout out to Emmy. That's my brother. Like yeah. we we been through stuff together. You know that yeah, was my guy. We came through stuff together. We came we came through stuff together. Shit. Definitely. You know what I mean. Um, and it was a good, it was good speaking to MV this morning because I haven't spoken to him in, in a long time. Like, you know, like we would, we, me and MV would, yo, what's, what time we meeting up? All right, I'm gonna meet you over there by the club at, at 1230. And we would really hang out and, and, and have, you know, like that's, that's my guy. So definitely shout out to him. Ooh, no, that's dope, man. I love that one type of, can you wrap it up to go, oh my can God. Can you wrap that up for him? Thank this you. is really good. This this is some shit I never even seen or heard of. If I eat that, I will be in a ditch. Like Ty, what happened with Tiger Woods? Because <laughs> <laughs> I will be laid out. You know, I've been up since nine doing football. Oh, it's all good. Wow. So good. You home now though. This is home. This is home for you. What stuff is going on? At your favorite home. time, boy. Thank you. What's your handle again, Miss oh, Jones? It's Miss Jones official on IG, and my podcast is on YouTube. It's called the Miss Jones Morning Show Reunion. Thank you. I'm Hala Mariah. On, on YouTube, the Miss Jones reunion. Everyone always wants On YouTube. Me. Mondays at 6 p.m. <laughs> Mondays at 6 p.m. Hala Mariah, your favorite time, boy. Miss you know who I am. Stuff is happening. Okay. Thank you. Episode 38, Kitchen Talk. You know what it is. It's not a motherfucking love show, but we're here. We're talking about real shit. Miss Jones, I love you. I love you back, man. No. I thank you for coming and sitting in the kitchen with me. Thank you for having me. This is a good time, everybody. Thank you. And, Did you and really have fun, though? That's definitely. cute. Definitely. I love that. Definitely. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Miss Jones.